Hope everyone's doing well. This is a little case study on 2013 Chrysler Town & Country V6 P0302 Cylinder 2 Misfire. I didn't really feel a misfire. It did shake a little bit at idle, but it wasn't a dead misfire. So look at the freeze frame. I always start with looking at the freeze frame, and I'm seeing that it happens at idle. And I kind of confirmed that it felt a little shaky at idle, but really I didn't feel a misfire at all, it seemed like. Looked at the misfire counter, and the misfire counter was showing a misfire the second you started it. Cold start, hot start, didn't matter. And it was counting up pretty quickly, but it only counted misfires until you got off idle. Above 1200 RPM, wasn't really seeing any misfires on the monitor, so it wasn't counting up. So I decided to do a relative compression test with the PicoScope, and you see that it filled. I used the number one coil as a trigger, which is the blue marks that you see on the scope pattern there. So I have a reference. So now I know firing order is one, two, three, four, five, six. You see a dip at cylinder number two. That's the cylinder that is causing a check engine light. If you look at that PicoScope reading, you'll also notice that the relative compression didn't always drop every time on cylinder two. At this point, I want to look at engine vacuum because it's looking like a mechanical issue. And I did a compression test, but the compression was okay. Did a cylinder leak down, it was less than 25%. It was you know, about eight to 10%, which is fine. It's over 100,000 miles on this engine. At that point, what I ended up doing was um, swap coils, plugs, and injectors to cylinder four. That was a known good cylinder and retested it. And it was still misfiring on number two. Being that it filled the relative compression test with the Pico scope, which looks at starter current draw, I know that there's a random failure of that cylinder that isn't showing up on the leak down of the compression gauge. While I got the spark plug out when I was swapping plugs, I looked in the cylinders. I didn't see anything in the number two cylinder. There wasn't a discolored valve. There wasn't any type of seat wear that was egg shaped. Um, there, there just really wasn't any evidence I was finding for valve guide seat wear that's notorious on the 11 to 13 cylinder heads. So now I decided to pull out the PicoScope pressure transducer. I'm looking at cylinder pressure in number two, and I noticed that it's going up and down, up and down. Not big changes, but it's not normal. And it coincides with the low current draw every time, because I've got the pressure transducer in cylinder two, and that is gonna be my reference, the blue line, those blue humps. And you'll see that the current draw on the starter for cylinder two is low, and it coincides with the lower pressures as well. So at this point, I'm going to compare it to cylinder four. Cylinder four is even across the board. This also gives me a chance to make sure my compression gauge, the mechanical one, was accurate. So it's it's pretty accurate, but it just that gauge is just not capable of uh, checking for odd failures like this one. And so now I've decided I need to look at the valve train. These engines like to wear rocker arms. The needle bearings inside will wear out, and so you'll have valves not opening all the way. Almost always have a tick with it, but not always the case. Also, the oil galley plugs that you see here, they can actually loosen up and cause lifters to get aerated and lifters not opening the valves all the way. These were a little bit loose. Um, decided to tighten them to 13 foot-pounds, I think was the spec. Torque them to spec there inspected every lifter and every rocker follower. None of them had any issues that I could see. All the needle bearings were in place. None were missing. After I moved the lifters and rockers from two to four, and now number four cylinder on startup was misfiring in the exact same counts, the exact same way, and the exact same RPM. So at that point, we know that it's either a lifter or one of the rocker followers. Now, I I know it's not a rocker follower because I could see every needle bearing. I counted them. All the play was normal. That's about all that can cause, uh, you know, a valve not to open far enough and cause a situation is if some of the 
some or all of the needle bearings are missing in the follower, which they were not. The only other possibility now is going to be the lifter then at that point. So I decided to pull the valve cover back off and I crank it over. And when I crank it over, I kind of caught with my eye one of the uh, valves not, not opening as far. Now it'd be hard to set up a dial indicator because of the valves being sunk in in the camshaft and followers kind of covering the valves. So not sure how you would measure that, but I decided to use a little Allen key and I compared it side by side with other good cylinders and the camshaft under load right now is actually putting pressure on the lifter. Really it shouldn't collapse more than a few thousandths max and it's actually uh, the exhaust lifter now on number four that was on two one of them was dropping probably about a couple hundred thousands so that's not okay and that's going to be multiplied because of the ratio of the rocker arm so now the valve is only opening 70 percent of the way something like that and that's enough to cause the computer to see a, a low uh, running compression cylinder and cause misfire counts and so that's basically you know what happened is it had good cranking compression, it had good leak down, spark was good, fuel was good, and at that point the only thing that really caught it was the P 